Hello and welcome back to the Ground Up Advanced Flight Tutorials. Uh, thank you very much for joining me for this lesson. In this lesson we're actually going to be learning about the VORs, so the first bit of instrument navigation. I'm going to actually talk about uh, what it what it does, how it works, and then I'm actually we're actually going to do a bit of a fly around from here, EGNX, Echo Golf November X-Ray, and we're going to actually fly around from here to a VOR that's nearby and then leave the uh, the VOR as well and fly away from the VOR back towards this airport. We're not going to land today, so we're literally just taking off and flying. This is the first bit of flying we're going to do that is away from the airport. We've done turns within the vicinity of the airport. We've done circuits within the vicinity of the airport, takeoffs and landings all at the airport. We've spent a lot of time at this airport. We're actually going to stray away from this airport now. Not too far, but still away that this airport is not going to be in our sights for a little bit of time. Before I continue, please do remember to uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share, comment, uh, and also support me on Patreon. Link to that is in the description box below. Your support would be massively, massively appreciated. I do have a small growing community on, on Patreon now, which is then moving to Discord. So Discord is where you can chat with me and you can chat with the other people who support me and get to know your likes, dislikes, and get, it, get involved with the community and the videos that I'm creating and really help influence that. So do go check that out. Anyway, we're going to be looking at VORs today. We're going to be looking at that first bit of radio navigation. So what is a VOR? VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range. It's a two-stage system, a ground station and a receiver on an aircraft, which allows an aircraft to basically know where you are in re in relation to the station and then using the instruments allow the pilot to fly to the station or away from the station now this is great because just like we have roads on on well on the ground i was going to say roads on the roads but that doesn't make any sense roads on the ground we have roadways or really they're called airways in the sky airways are what allow aircraft to fly on predefined routes. I mean, if you look up at the sky uh, on a clear day, you'll always see planes flying roughly in the same direction. You'll always see a certain type of aircraft at a certain height in a certain direction. If you live near an airport like I do, uh, you're going to see aircraft all coming in to land all in a certain direction. At you know, maybe they're at 2,000 feet, maybe they're at 5,000 feet, maybe they're at 8,000 feet, but they're all coming into land in a certain direction. This is essentially with the use of VORs. It's not just VORs, there are other things like NDBs and, uh, you know, all those other kind of stuff. There are other visual references and there are things like um, SIDs and STARS, which is Standard Instrument Departures and uh, Standard Terminal Approach something. I can't kind of remember that one. Basically, approach and departures out of out of airports using radio navigation, all built into computers and really sophisticated equipment. But a lot of it does boil down to these VORs. They've been in use since the 1940s, uh, and they are basically common practice all across the globe. So that's just that's how it works. These VORs are really, really important for people, for pilots, whether you're general aviation or commercial pilots, to fly from place to place safely and manage to get to where they need to go. Because, for example, the way I'm going to explain how this works is you've got yourself your mobile phone. Your mobile phone can emit a beacon, right? Now, if you know where you've put your mobile phone and you know all the landmarks around it, you can use visual flight rules to find it. But if you're walking in fog, heavy fog that you can't see more than maybe more than a meter in front of you, if that, you're not going to be able to use those visual cues. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to use a, a Find My Phone app or something like that, you know, a location finder. That's how these things work, these VORs. They allow, they allow us to fly in clouds, they allow us to fly in fog, they allow us to fly in unfamiliar areas. And just by looking at the charts and saying, right, okay, we need to tune this VOR to this VOR to this VOR to this VOR, fly to this one, then turn and fly to this one, then turn and fly to this one, then turn and fly to this one, and we're going to get to our destination. Just like a road on in the ground or on the ground. 
exact same thing in the sky just a, an airway it's called an airway so how does this how does this benefit us how does it benefit us and how do we use these things well if we want to get from point a to b we can use visual rules but with air traffic control and loads of aircraft in the sky using visual rules in certain areas for example around this airport visual flight rules just will not apply the way we've been doing things if you try to do that at this airport in real life it's not going to cut it it is not going to cut it for the simple reason is there is too much air traffic in the area and if you were trying to fly in london or los angeles or san francisco or seattle or you know places like that manchester edinburgh uh, milan you're not going to be able to because there are so many airports around that area it's such a densely populated area in terms of air traffic that you will be vectored which means you'll be given instructions where to fly and where not to fly now it doesn't help if every if every time an aircraft is flying you need an air traffic controller because that's going to be really really tiring imagine an air traffic controller having to manage every single aircraft in the sky so if there are 50 aircraft in the sky you're going to need 50 air traffic controllers saying turn here turn here turn here turn here turn here this into this speed up to that reduce speed to that watch this watch this watch this watch this watch out for that so you have all these stations which allow aircraft to follow predefined routes that can then be watched over by air traffic control and they're going to say oh yeah they're coming up to this VOR they're coming up to this VOR they're coming up to this VOR to join this approach to join this landing to join this whatever they need to do this transition to fly over this area so the air traffic control has a burden ease they can focus on the important things like bringing planes into land whilst all the other aircraft are all following these predetermined routes going right we're flying to this VOR and then from here we're going to turn to this heading and fly to that VOR and then we're going to turn to that heading and fly to that VOR simple as pie and then the plane behind it's going to do the exact same thing the plane behind it's going to do the exact same thing and the plane behind that's going to do the exact same thing everyone is on predefined routes it's safe it's very easy to use and it means you can't really get lost simple and if you do get lost you can then ask air traffic control who are now free and available to talk to you very very easy so how are we going to use this over here where we've got a couple of instruments or we've got a number of instruments we've got two navigation instruments over here I'm actually going to get rid of that and that we've got two navigation instruments over here nav 1 nav 2 we've also got the same nav 1 and nav 2 on this little rotary buttons with an, with some numbers over here now your one may look different I know in the Cessnas they look different in a newer aircraft they might look different these may be in different places that might be at the bottom that one might be at the top but they all do the same thing you're looking for the one that says nav not com com is to talk to people that's communications nav is navigation that's the one we want so we're looking for nav and we're going to be using nav 2 today because nav 1 it has got this crosshair and I don't want to sort of scare you guys with the crosshair so we're going to be looking at just the one with this one line over here we'll be using that in the next lesson right so nav 2 is over here for us whatever numbers we tune in on here are going to affect what we see over here navigation radios on the frequencies operate between 108 megahertz and 117.95 that also includes the ILS frequencies that's the instrument landing system frequencies for airports so navigation and the VORs and the ILS are all on the same frequency that also means that DMEs can be tracked to the same frequency as well so if you look over here you can see the DMEs are also on the same frequency so we can tune up to 117.95 so apparently we just picked up something over there but that's okay so we're going to leave this DME that's the di that's the distance measuring equipment is exactly what it says on the tin it measures the distance it's equipment that measures the distance now uh, we'll talk about that once we're in the air we're going to leave that on uh, remote which means that for this aircraft it's going to track whatever it is if you've got modes on your one do switch yours into remote and it's going to track whatever we set up on the correct navigation make sure that your DME is also set to nav 2 like so 
because we're going to be using nav 2 unless you're using nav 1 if this is on nav 1 make sure that's set to nav 1 but for us we're, it's going to be on nav 2 the VOR that we're going to be looking at today is the Trent VOR it's not far from the airport that we're at of course Echo Golf November X-Ray we're going to start on runway 09 so make sure you get yourself onto runway 09 and make sure you tune uh, get ready to tune in that VOR get your aircraft ready because what we're going to be doing is we're going to take off and we're going to fly to this VOR however we're going to use a radial to fly to it so we're not just going to fly directly to to the VOR and find out where it is and fly directly to it we're going to join a specific radial as you would do in real life so I'm going to explain how we do that first of all we need to find the frequency for that VOR so that VOR is 115.7 so I'm going to tune in 115.7 now the moment I do that look what happens to this this thing has turned now you may also notice that this thing doesn't seem to be pointing in the same direction as our compass our compass is saying 091 this is saying 300 and well 315 that's not right I'll explain what that means in a second the first thing we need to do is tune the correct VOR 115.7 we need to now check that we've tuned it so a VOR has a Morse code identifier so that means we're going to have dots and dashes telling us which one it is we need to know the Morse code identifier of this VOR it's dash dash dot dash that's what we're looking for so I'm going to switch on this here nav 2 to speaker and it should give us dash dash dot dash there you go as I was speaking it said it dash dash dot dash so we can switch that off we're happy to know that we are we're confident in saying that we are on the correct VOR now now to have a look at this what is this that we're looking at we've got this weird knob over here that says OBS that's supposed to say OBS as well so unfortunately the the previous owner of this aircraft has sort of rubbed it out and I need to redo it so we've got this one that says OBS this is an omni bearing selector it means that we can change this compass card to do whatever we want as you can see but you're also noticing now as we're changing that that needle is moving around it's moving around everywhere you can see I'm moving around on purpose but it's moving around everywhere what this is allowing us to do is this is allowing us to select a course that we wish to fly so that means that if we wish to fly a specific direction to or from a VOR we can set it on this and this is going to tell us if we are on the correct radial now radial is imagine a a dot on a piece of paper or a circle on a piece of paper and you draw 360 lines out of that circle in all the directions so you've got all 360 degrees each one of those lines is a radial so that is what a radial is now every single VOR has these radials because it's transmitting in all these directions at once it's it's an omnidirectional beacon so it's going to it's going to be transmitting in all these directions and what we need to do is we need to work out which direction we want to fly on it so we can use VORs for a number of things we can use it to fly past them we can use it to fly towards them we can use it to fly away from them most often it's always towards and away from them and then crossing over the VORs or going towards it a certain amount and then turning off and tracking another VOR another VOR so you use multiple VORs in sort of uh, in tandem so one after another you're going to use them however in today's lesson we're only going to be using one VOR and we're going to use that same VOR to go towards and away from it so this is just because we're practicing we're going to pick a course today we're heading in the direction of 9 so basically 90 degrees or 91 degrees now if we were to select 91 degrees on this you're going to notice right there that we was that 91 I think that was no, that was 90 that's 91 you're going to notice two things one this is way over to the left and two we've got a flag up here saying FR from to and from to and from is basically telling us exactly what what it says on the tin again whether we're going towards it or away from it so this is saying that on the radial of zero 9 
we are going away from the VOR station. So if we were on this radio, we're away from it, which means the VOR station is behind us somewhere. So it's n if we were to fly in that direction, we're not going to ever get to it. It's somewhere in that direction behind us. So it's somewhere in that direction. However, this left also tells us that it's not only behind us, but it's to our left. So it's behind us and to our left. Why do we know that? Because we've just put the same course that we're headed, we're heading on right now. Right now we're saying it's on, we're heading on a course of 90 or 91. If we set that same course, it's showing this to the left, which means the station is to our left, and it's showing from, which means the station is behind us. So somewhere in that direction is the station. We've established this now. However, if I turn this around, don't use this, don't get confused with this, because if I turn this around to about, I'd say about 140, that's 140, 141, there we go. That's now showing a straight line. So what does that mean? Does that mean that the station is now behind us again? Like directly behind us? Of course not. Again, the from is showing that the station is behind us, but this is showing that we are on a radio of 140 away from the station. So that means that the station is 140 degrees around. So if we look from zero and we go now, this is very, very important. Because we're going from, it means it's behind us. So if we go from zero and go to 140 degrees right there, and then go to the reciprocal on the opposite side right there that's the direction the station is in relation to the aircraft so it's sort of not directly to the side so it's not there and it's not there it's about there so exactly where we were pointing before now we know exactly where the station is and that's the radial that we are currently on so if we were to fly on that radial or the reciprocal of that radial because we're going from so if we were to fly on the opposite way so where this dot is becomes our heading so that's going to be what 140 so it's going to be um, 240 to 320 what am I going 240 320 if we were to fly on a course of 320 from this very spot we would end up on the actual radial and we would get to the VOR obviously we can't do that we've got to take off so what we're going to do is we're going to take off and we're going to intercept the radial so by intercept it means we're going to fly towards it no towards a radial not towards the VOR knowing that we're going to eventually have to turn to face the VOR so what we're going to do is we're going to set our radial I want to pick the radial of um, I want to pick let's let me think we were to pick a radial of well we don't want to go 270 let's go for a radial of see that's changing very very soon can you see that from to and from so it's almost almost working out where it is let's go for a radial of this one here uh, so we're on zero so we're going to head zero and then we're going to want to intercept the radial. 270 would be directly across. We're going to go for sort of a diagonal. There we go. So we're going to go for this one here. We're going to go for two, 230. So that's, that's the one I've picked today. 230 is what I've picked. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off. We're going to turn to a heading of zero. We're going to turn left heading 360. We're going to fly. We're going to do our standard takeoff, standard everything so we're going to climb at 90 you know flaps out one one notch that's actually flaps out quite a lot let's flaps out one notch we're going to climb at 90 knots we're going to then speed up to whatever speed uh, our discretion we're going to take today but we're going to climb to 2,000 and maintain 2,000 feet so we're going to do that today uh, as we always do but then we're going to intercept and fly this radial so if you're ready to take off we're going to make sure you make sure you're ready what we're going to do is we're going to take off, 
once we are clear of the runway and the M1, the motorway that goes across that I've mentioned a couple of times, we're then going to turn to a heading of 360. We're going to climb to 2000 feet. Once we've got to 2000 feet, we're going to wait until we intercept this. This is a course deviation indicator. It's telling us how far left or right we are within certain tolerances. So you can see that's about five degrees. So it tells us whether we're in fi five degrees of it either way. So we're going to know when we're moving towards the radial that we want, which is the 230 radial, when this starts moving to the center. So that's going to be our indicator of when we need to turn to 230. And that's the heading we're going to turn to. We're going to turn from zero to 230. That's going to be quite a sharp turn, but we're going to manage it. So, here we go. I'll zoom out a little bit so it's easier for you guys to see things. Don't forget, again, the rudder. Don't ever forget that rudder. We're going to rotate at about 70. There we go. And we're up. Positive right. Gear up. we go I'm up and away I'm going to trim up for my climb as I always do and we're going to fly runway heading not too bad so we're up we're up and doing what we need to do as we as we've done before and we're going to see if we can join this radio so it's not going to be too difficult at all. There we go. So there's the motorway. You can just see the cars and the lorries on the on the motorway underneath us. Right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross that and begin our turn. There we go. We've crossed it. Beginning our turn to a heading of zero as you do to control it keep it in control and we'll start the rollout Oop, bit of an early rollout for me today And there we have it. So we're on zero. So this is essentially an introduction to IFR flight. Now, whilst we're continuing our climb, we're going to watch for the course deviation indicator. So again, this thing, the CDI, the course deviation indicator. We're going to make sure that we keep an eye on that the whole way. Now, to help you guys out in this, I'm actually going to tune the exact same as I have tuned on nav 2 on nav 1 and I'm going to track and follow it so you guys can see what's actually happening so don't you guys don't do the same because this is not how you do it I'm just doing this so you guys can see what's actually going on so you can see now if I bring this down to 311 if you watch that top top one you're going to notice it move. Can you see it moving? You can see that thing moving. It's moving to the left. So you can see to track it again, we now have to bring it to 310, 309, so on and so forth. Do you know what I'm going to do? actually going to hmm I'm just thinking what would be good to uh, a better route to fly I'm actually going to change this I'm actually going to fly we're going to have a change of plan we're going to fly 270 or 280 actually there we go we're going to fly 280 it's going to be faster 
Yeah, it's going to be faster for us to fly 280. And I'm actually going to set my heading select to 280 as well. Uh, now, the reason I'm doing that is so I can talk to you guys about other stuff without having to worry too much. Now, we're coming up on our on our 2,000 feet, so don't forget to trim. See, you've got to keep an eye on everything here. It's very, very important. So, there we go. We'll bring ourselves nicely down to 2,000 feet. now the aircraft should start accelerating as we want it to so you can see if I'm looking at this as I bring that down this is now almost so it's at 303 degrees in fact you know what we're going to be even more awkward we're actually going to go down to 290 the only reason I'm doing this is so that this doesn't take too long so you guys don't get too bored so we sw we'll swung it over to 290 now, 290, which means that this course deviation indicator of ours is going to start moving very, very soon, because as you can see, that's already at 300. So when that gets to 295, which I'll show you here, when it gets to 295, when that's in the middle, this is going to start moving. So we're going to prepare to turn to a heading to follow the radial that we've just chosen, which is 290 which is basically northwest. We're going to be flying northwest towards this. There you go. You can actually see that moving now. So it's almost at the five degree mark. And there you go. It's now moving very, very clearly. So once that gets to about two, I think I'm going to begin the turn because it's not too sharp a turn that we have to do. It's only we only have to move around 20 degrees I'm a little bit high uh, so I'm going to actually let the aircraft drop a little bit increase in speed as well All right so we're heading 290 let's begin that turn now nice and gentle again like I said it's not too much turn that we have to do it's our turn correct. There we go. So it's a 10 degree bank that I'm doing at the moment. We've got a little bit of turbulence here. That's going to cause problems for me. But you just continue you guys just continue the turn. That's causing a lot of problems for me. And I will I will manage and catch up to you guys. There's 290. That was very that was very different and now I've got a huge climb going on for some reason bring that down right so I've climbed to two and a half thousand feet for well I've actually put both hands on the okay I just ended up putting both hands on the um, controls just there right I'm going to slow my aircraft down I'm going to rectify the situation here but hopefully you guys have turned on to the radial that you guys the 290 radial as we wanted I'm slightly off because of whatever just happened so I'm just gonna bring my aircraft back down nice and calm nice and slowly but you can see that I'm almost on the zero there so I'm gonna let myself get back onto that zero go I think that will do I trim myself back up I'm actually going to at this point kick in some autopilot just to help us out here oh no do take that off just to help me out at this point in time so I can explain things to you hopefully you guys won't need the autopilot I'm only using it so I can explain things to you guys set that up heading on should do the trick for me there we go right so if we have a look at this now we're actually you can see the flag is saying we're going two 
so that's towards the actual VOR station this is great this is good for us you can see that that needle is essentially in the middle the course deviation indicator which means that we are on the radial that we've selected on the course so we selected the 290 radio there you go we are on the 290 radio this is good so now another aircraft if they would if they told us to fly the 290 radial if the air traffic control told us fly the 290 radial in towards this and then turn here or that was on our flight plan that that's what we're going to be doing that's exactly what we're doing here we are following this radial now we're also we've also got this information over here i need to watch my throttle so I'm descending very slowly uh, there we go we are 9.2 nautical miles at 100 knots away from our destination as in the Trent VOR it's also going to take us five minutes to get there so we know how long it's going to take to get there what speed we're doing and how far away we are I am going to pick up the pick up the pace a bit though That's a bit better. I'll pick up the pace. And I am trimming to maintain my 2,000 feet here. 105 knots, it's gonna take us four minutes to get there, 7.8 nautical miles. Now this is good for us because now if we were to tune, if we were to go, let's say, for another um, for let's say for another VOR we could say okay well we need to leave at this speed or we need to we need to uh, change VOR at this distance and uh, to get onto another VOR now what I am going to do is I'm going to do something different I'm going to use the same VOR and I'm actually going to say we need to switch when we get to three miles away from the VOR we're going to turn onto a radial of 170 we're going to turn on the 170 radial away from the VOR. So when we get to three miles, we're actually going to turn away from this. This aircraft is, after that turbulence, it, didn't want to, it doesn't want to play ball. So we're going to wait for this to get to three nautical miles, and then we're going to turn to a heading. Now we're go we've got to intercept the radial again. Remember I said about intercepting? So we're going to have to intercept the radial. So the radial we're going to intercept is going to be the 170 radial. Now, we know we're fine on this. We're flying in this direction. As long as we keep going in this direction, we're going to remain on this heading, which means that we can change this. So when it gets to about the four and a half mile mark, we're going to change this to 170. So we're going to have the 170 up here, and then we're going to join that radial by intercepting it which means flying again towards it and then turning back onto it so coming up to four and a half now and at this point we can actually use two if we wanted to but we're just still going to use this one so here we go i'm now going to switch this over to one five one six one seven there we go one seven zero so now the one seven zero radial is to our left that's where it's showing at the moment. Oh, sorry, to our right. That's that's where the that's where the radial is. We need to turn right to head onto that radial, but it's not going to be there for long because we're going to be flying this from the field. So essentially, when we want that to come around, so that we're flying that way. So we're actually going to wait until maybe two nautical miles actually to turn on to this and we're going to intercept it and to intercept it we're going to actually fly a heading of 210 that's it that's the intercept heading that we want to fly today so two nautical miles now I'm going to do this with the autopilot but you guys will have to turn this manually make sure you're not using the autopilot there um, all right so there's the two nautical miles so now I'm going to turn this aircraft To a heading of and I need to actually bring the nose up myself in fact you know what never mind I'm gonna fly it manually as well apparently there 
Yeah, apparently I'm flying this manually. Yeah, yep, apparently I am. Some weird goings on on this aircraft right now. So we're going to fly 210. And we're going to intercept the radial as we're flying that. She's going to lower the aircraft and turn it. It does not want to cooperate with me right now. There it goes. Now it's doing it automatically again. Well done. But it doesn't want to keep the nose up, does it? So I'm going to keep the nose up manually. There we go. We're on a heading of 210. Now look at that. We immediately joined that radial. So we've just passed that radial immediately. So now we're going to continue around. And at this point, because the autopilot is annoying me, I'm going to completely switch it off. Just make the aircraft smoother. There we go. We're going to completely follow this one around. And we're going to intercept it again. So we tried to intercept it early. It took a little bit of time. We went around. So we're going to now go to 150. And we'll intercept this. So there's 150. We'll roll out. We'll retrim. And now look, that's already coming alive again. So now I'm going to turn to 170. with this aircraft not playing ball, but still. There we go. Regain control of the aircraft. Gently, gently regain control of the aircraft. Perfect. So now we're on 170, and we've got the, we're, we're on the course. So that means we are now on the 170 radial outbound from where we need to be. Okay. Stay as you're supposed to stay, you silly aircraft. Try this again. Come on. Let's see if that works. So there we go. So we're now on the 170 radial, outbound from the Trent VOR. So that's that's really how simple it is and now you'll notice you may have noticed something the power station or the cooling tower is right there that cooling tower that we used last time is right over there which means the airport is not far away as a matter of fact the airport is very very close to where we are it's um just actually out of our is it out of our view there it is right there there's the cooling t there's the airport so we've got the cooling tower and we've got the airport there's that lake that we used in the last episode. So in the last lesson we used that lake and now we've got this cooling tower which means that we can actually fly in and land this aircraft. So what we've done is we've just flown around the area using a VOR and we've ended up exactly back where we started. This is great for us. However, we're not going to be landing in this video. That's going to be the next one where I talk about the ILS systems. We're not going to be explaining this VOR. We're going to take off. We're going to fly that VOR. We're going to do essentially the exact same thing we've done here. And then we're going to join and land this ILS. So thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Leave comments in the comments box below. Support me on Patreon. That would be massively appreciated, especially as you can join that community. Talk to me on Discord and we can have a nice chat about a whole load of things you can talk among other people that support me and you guys can really influence the content that i create plus you guys get access to the flight sim tutorials channel which is really really important because i can talk about all these in a lot more detail for example exactly how vor works from an engineering perspective with all the different frequencies and the bands and you know the, the way the the way the actual receiver and transmitter works so on and so forth once again, thank you very much for watching this episode of the Ground Up Advanced Flight Tutorials, and I will see you next time uh, where, like I said, we're going to land uh, back at Nottingham East Midlands Airport, or East Midlands Airport, not Nottingham, East Midlands Airport, um, with the same sort of system and the ILS. I'll see you guys then.